Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be trying this radio out with a replacement rectifier tube that I have right here. The one that was in there, uh, well, I think it's got a short in it because it was glowing blue when we started up the uh, receiver at the end of the last video. So we'll pop this guy in. Now I got a new, I guess I can call it an instrument in my shop here. You can see it right there. That little device uh, measures quite a few interesting things. Uh, basically, you, you plug it in the wall and you plug whatever it is you're interested in in here. And then on the screen, you get all kinds of things like current draw, power consumption, kilowatt hours over time, all this kind of interesting stuff. So I thought I'd try it out in here. I'll plug it in there. I'll plug the radio in here. There we go. I think it'll come on as soon as I energize the... Uh, energize things here. So, uh, I think we're ready to start this guy up. Now there's a chance it's switched into a phono mode right now. I don't think so, but there's a chance of that. And also I have no antenna on the uh, radio side of this, so whether this is going to sound like a radio or not, who knows? My guess is it's going to hum once we get it going. Switch is on, the two controls over here are turned down. So I think we're ready to go. I just turn this so we can kind of see it, if we can. Okay, once again on restricted power, keep our eye on this light up here. Last time that, that light kind of told the story, didn't it? So this light here. So what it should do is it should come on fairly bright, dull down, and then get slowly a little bit brighter again as the radio comes into full operation and draws full current. That's what it should do. Let's see what it does. Here we go. Dull down, getting by. It's pretty quick. Get back at the radio. Nothing blue glowing. The tube I put in is warming up. Okay, supply voltage is 67 volts right now. <clears throat> That's pretty low. See, my regular meter up here I use only goes down to 100, so anytime it's below 100 volts on the outlet, I can't really tell. Good show, everything's warming up here, it seems. No bad sounds. I have an awful lot of metal tubes in this radio, so we can't really look in and see if they're heating up or not. Waiting to see if any sound or anything comes out of the uh, speaker here. Now, with the voltage so low, it's still at around 70 volts. With the voltage so low, uh, there's a chance some of the tubes haven't actually switched on. So, there, uh, that might be one reason why we hear nothing out of the speaker so far. Giving it a bit of time in case uh, something's going to burn. does not appear to be lit. Okay, I'm going to stick my ear on the speaker there, hear what's coming out of it. Hard to say, I can hear a slight hum, but then there's a number of pieces of equipment in here that uh, generate a bit of a hum also, so I'm not sure. Let's turn the volumes up. happening. Uh, nothing in the eye tube that I can see. No magic eyes. Turn down the volume. Okay, we'll take it up to the next, the next, uh, let's go to the next level. Okay, so we're still at 70 volts. Let me put in another light here. Uh, 80 2 volts now. now. The 
could have more defective tubes. Who knows? Who knows? Could even be tubes uh, in their uh, the sockets are uh, not making proper contact. Could be lots of simple little things like that happening right now. Okay, tubes uh, warm up very slowly when you restrict the power to a radio like this. So I'm giving it a fair bit of time. They must be warmed up by now, though. Okay, stick my ear down by the uh, speaker here. In fact, let me try this. Certainly is a hum coming out of there. It's a good thing. Quiet hum. Both volumes turned up full. Just need for any crackle. Anything. Nothing. Okay, let's uh, see if the... I thought I got a whiff of old radio cooking. Yeah, could easily be these lights with some dust on them. Doesn't quite smell like smoke. Now that output tube just does not appear to be outputting. Lots of heat coming off the uh, rectifier tube there. Let me douse the lights in here briefly. So it looks like the output tube is not lighting. Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, that blue light is actually a little light on the camera itself, reflecting back off the tube. So I have the feeling that tube is not lighting. The tubes feel a little warm, including the output tube. I don't think what I'm smelling is important at all. It's just it's just things getting warmed up. We're on band A right now, which is the regular broadcast band. But again, no antenna. We're still at 83 volts, which is a little low. So I think what I'm going to do, now I believe this is an 80 watt machine, and I can flip this onto watts. We're at 55 watts being consumed by this. So that makes sense with the restricted voltage. Let's. Let's take it up to full voltage here, full power, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, not only do I not have any antenna connected, I even don't have these uh, uh, lead wires connected into this push button thing, so I, I, I don't believe the radio can really work at all. But it should make a hiss and a hum and a buzz and stuff like that. Okay, full power. Hundred and forty three watts. Sounds like twice as much power is supposed to be there. Hundred and forty three watts.
Output tube still does not. Doesn't feel like much is happening there. 143 watts on there. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that on camera? Sounds a little high to me. Um, Take it back down to the lower. See, it went from 55 watts to 143 watts. It's the first time I've ever used a power meter on a radio like this, so it's a little bit of new information. Now let's let's see what the rating is on the radio. I think it's an 80 watt radio. 80 watts. Very, very interesting. I have never done this, so the thing is consuming twice as much power as it's intended to consume. In fact, right now it's doing 55 watts. Fifty-five watts. Eighty-three. Eighty-three volts. Pretty interesting information. Wow. Okay, so what could that mean? Well, it can mean quite a number of things. Um, it can mean a lot of different things. I think I'm going to cut the power off. We're going to pop each tube out and pop them back in and just make sure it's not a tube contact problem. So power off here. I, I'd rather do this with the power off. is just in case there's a pin contact problem with one of these tubes. You know, the radio's so quiet. Ooh, doesn't that sound terrible? so quiet I, I doubt it can be any of these front end tubes that might silence it so much oh that just sound I'm yeah <laughs> that's because of the type of uh, socket here The name of this device, it's called a kilowatt. I just bought it off eBay for a price uh, which doubled with the transportation, delivery, crossing a border, all that kind of stuff. Not, not too, too expensive. It's marketed on the idea you buy this or run around your house, test all your stuff, then you find out which things are using electricity. Uh, and then you somehow take action and save yourself a bundle. And that's how they sell it. You buy one of these, you save yourself on, the, on your electricity bill. And the money comes back to you that way. But there's an easier way to figure out what's using electricity in your house if you're not really aware. And you just ask yourself, what's getting hot? Or, what's doing a lot of heavy work? Six K six output tube. So if this doesn't bring the radio back to life, I'll probably run all these tubes through a tube tester. Now the last one's a little tricky to get out. What is it? 6K6. Oh. Wait a second.
I haven't looked at the schematic for this radio yet, so I'm not sure. 6K6. So it has two 6K6s in the output. It must be a push-pull output. You know, unless the wrong tubes are in here. Not terribly likely, but I have encountered it. You kind of always assume when you get these that you've got to be the right tubes in the right spot. I have encountered a radio with wrong tubes stuck in it. Okay, we'll give it another go and see what happens. The chance of this fixing it really, really low in my in my book. Okay, we're all set again. Turn the volumes down just in case. I'm saying volumes because one of them is a volume and one is the uh, eighty-three watts, eighty-four. This is a pretty restricted voltage here. No, it's 84 volts. Whoops, I had a button on volts here. Okay. 55 watts again. So we're right back to where we were. Now I'm going to guess that older 6K6 output tube is a dud. I get nothing. No reason to put it on full power. It's already over its nameplate power consumption. Just running on uh, restricted uh, power, restricted voltage. Very interesting information. Never, never knew this before. Never knew the uh, power draw, other than looking up at light bulbs and kind of taking a guess as to uh, what's going on. Okay. Uh, it off. I think I'm going to do a round of tube testing with this with this guy. That'll give me a chance also to test the uh, shorted tube. I'm interested to see how that comes out on my tube tester. And also the, uh, well, yeah, the new rectifier. I should probably test that because there's a chance it didn't work. And, uh, you know, I didn't uh, test for B plus or anything in here so I don't really know for sure that even the rectifier tube did its job but uh, okay the tube testing we go okay so I just finished testing uh, all the tubes in here and the good news is uh, all the tubes are, are good or good enough and the bad news is uh, all the tubes are good or good enough because uh, that's not helping me sort out why we're getting nothing out of the speaker yet so now this radio does have a phono input. How about, how about looking over this way a little bit? This radio has a phono input. So what I'm going to attempt, I think you just push this button here. And you're on phono. And the phono input plug is right here. Phono plug. So I can just touch the top of that. I'll be feeding in a hum signal that we can hear what comes out of the, uh, out of the speaker, if anything. If I remember right, there's a setting. There's a, a setting on the band switch on the front of the radio that uh, engages the push buttons. But I'm willing to bet you don't need to set it there uh, to utilize this uh, this uh, phono input. Okay, that's my uh, that's my guess. I think it's a good guess. By the way, I have exactly the same radio, but it's not exactly the same. I have a KL70. This is a KL69. The KL70 fits in a small, well, big tabletop cabinet like this. It has a speaker about, about that size in it. Of course, this guy fits in a great big cabinet. He has this giganto speaker back here. The appears to me the difference between the two radios is in the output circuit. The radio I have, the KL70, 70 has one output tube, has no tubes in this position, whereas this radio has two tubes here, two 6K, 6K6s, I believe, two output tubes, so this is clearly going to be wired up in a push-pull type arrangement to give more power at, at low distortion to this big, gigantic speaker here. 
So I think is the difference. This one has more speaker oomph in it. The radio part, I believe, is essentially identical. So it's just a question of the, uh, the output here. Okay, um, so let's fire it up. That's not a good term to use right now, is it? <laughs> let's turn it on. And I'll try injecting some audio signals into the audio amplifier. We'll hear what, what comes out, if anything. Okay. We're all set. Give a little bit of time to warm up. Maybe something will be different. I pulled all the tubes out again and stuck them all back in. Maybe maybe things will be different. Turn up the volumes. I should really work that band switch a little bit. Just in case that's the source of the silence. Let's do that. I'm just gonna turn down the radio a wee bit just in case it comes to life and I'm going to shut my shop door here. I don't want to scare my furry friends. So band switch. Of course we're on the band A. Volume up. It's not the Not the slightest sound coming out of the speaker. Nothing. Nada. Okay. Now we'll turn the volumes down again because I don't want to scare myself and you too. Now, flip the button here. So I believe this is now set to play phono. Up the volume. It's just nothing. It's definitely humming. I can feel the hum with my finger. So there is something going on here. Okay, down the volume a little bit. About halfway. Turn up a little more. Wow, okay. Not a thing coming out of there. Not a thing. So I say that one more time. No thing at all coming out of there. Try to band switch a little more. Volume's right up now. So we can actually read the uh, 19 meter, 25 meter, 31 meter. Band B, which is actually uh, just above the AM band, band A, PB, push button. Okay, so we've got it set to push button now. So if I was wrong about that, I don't think I was wrong about it. Okay, um, it's totally dead. Now, for all I know, the radio part is working just fine, it's just working away here but its signal is not making it into the amplifier. Um, another possibility is that B plus is really not getting through this radio, so some of these tubes are totally quiet, especially the output tubes. That's probably the next step, is just make sure that B plus is getting to the output tubes uh, properly. So I'm gonna switch it off here because I don't wanna fiddle with this radio while it's on in terms of tipping it up and that. So we know a little more about it. Let's see if we can tip it up this way. here, two of them. 
So a couple things we can do there. Uh, we can measure for V plus voltage on those tubes, all those bad looking capacitors around it, and we can also try to stick a signal right on the grid of one of the output tubes, which is a good idea at this point, I think. Trying to get some sound out of this so we can get a, kind of like a starting point. Okay, I think I'm going to read the voltage. Using my somewhat scary voltmeter here. We're going to connect this here. Nervously wax it against the radio. Just the just the force of habit. <laughs> Any of you who've done a lot of this kind of work, the moment where you connect the ground to something is a can be an exciting moment. Shouldn't be, but it can be. Put this guy on. Start to warm up. There he goes. Getting his morning exercise. Now, I should probably take a moment and determine which pin it is, although I'll test all the pins on the tube. 6K6. See, I don't look at everything on the internet. See how fast that was? 6K6. So there we are. We're all set. It's a, got three grids in it because it's a powerful tube. Blasting electrons at the plate to suppress the bounce back and also to affect the uh, inter-electrocapacitance. It has these extra uh, grids inside it. Okay. I haven't switched this on yet, have I? No. Okay, well that would be a good thing to do at this point. Switch on. Still working with restricted voltage, of course. 85. 5 volts. I like this thing. This thing not only will it read watts, it'll also read uh, volt amps, which is kind of interesting. And uh, frequency, it'll even tell you the uh, frequency of your uh, line power, not that I'm ever concerned about that. Okay, I think we're ready to start here. First thing we're going to do is read on the power supply capacitor and make sure that there's something there. Ugh, that doesn't look very good. I'm on the 500 volt scale. Well, that does not look good at all. Okay, actual voltage here. It's very low. Actual voltage here. Uh, about 70, about 60 volts. 60 volts. You see, and now this one's only 45 volts. That may not be enough to really get these tubes conducting. It could explain why uh, when I do put full voltage on, I get a heavy current according, or heavy, uh, heavy power consumption according to that meter. Um, it's because there's something wrong, but at this point, the wrongness is not presenting itself very well because I have the radio working on such low voltage. Okay, let's see if that shows up on the uh, on the output tube. Right there it is. There's something there. Again, 150 volt scale, so I'm about you know, 35 volts. That might be the screen. That's probably the plate. It's got 60 volts on it. like a red wire running off to the speaker here. Yeah, that's kind of curious now. Um, there's four wires going to the speaker. Two for the field coil, two for the voice coil, but the um, output transformer is located right up on the speaker here appears to have, oh, it's kind of jumbled up there. Uh, what I'm looking for is a uh, center tapped output transformer with one tube feeding one side and the other tube feeding the other side of the primary. 
So I'm expecting an output transformer designed like that. Uh, four wires going to the speaker. Well, maybe one of them's common. Because I would kind of expect five going up there. Okay. What about the other two? The other tube is almost certain to be the same. It just has paralleled wires. Like I can see coming right from the capacitor right to here. It's reading 45. 45, so... Let's go back a little ways. Trying it. We'll, we'll just work our way back and make sure every tube is getting some B plus, even though we already know it's, it's awfully low. It's got to be this one here. Okay, so I just went around and that tube did not show any. Let's try it again. I may have missed the pin that's involved here. A little bit there. A little wee bit there. A little wee bit there too. I think that was a here. This is a bit of an unusual tube in here. This is a 6SF5, I think. It's not the most common. The rest of the tubes are run of the mill. This is the detector tube here. Uh, I'm not seeing much on that voltmeter. Uh, extremely low B plus. There. It's just 20 volts or something. I don't think that can even turn the tube on. Okay, so let's just be absolutely sure. Six. SF5. 6 SF5. Very popular tube in 1941, but not much outside of that. 6 SF5. High mu triode. Simple tube. Plate is pin number 5. There is no. Uh, it's only got one, one grid in it. You probably can't see the diagram. 6 SF5. To double check the tubes in here. I went out to the cabinet and I photographed a little bit of information that was inside the cabinet. And I was checking to make sure these were the right tubes. 6 SF5, yeah. Rather than stick my head in the cabinet and try to read it, I just shoved my camera in there. Hey, what a wonderful world it is today. Pin number five. Pin number five should have full B plus on it. Pin number five. A little more light on it here. Okay, so there's the little key. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can see it r right here. This should be it. It's a tiny voltage coming up. There's a resistor here. On the other side, oh, oh. almost uh, that's all that's on the capacitor in the power supply, 45 volts. So it's all present on this other side of this resistor. Not much left, you know. And what's right here? Here's a capacitor. No, oh, it's a different. That's a different pin. Oh no, that's a pin. That capacitor goes to ground. You know, this thing could be leaking, pulling down the voltage here. Which is probably what's happening. I can't be absolutely sure. I don't know why else. Or this resistor has gone high. Uh, there's probably no current flowing through this tube, so you wouldn't expect. Uh, very much a uh, voltage drop on it right now but if it's gone way high if it's gone almost open so that's that tube let's try the next one over let's see the next one over uh, hazarding a 
guess as to which pin is the uh, high voltage. Okay, so there's 45 on the other side of a resistor coming to this tube. There's about 30 on the far side of the resistor, and before the resistor it's 45. Now, certain resistors in a radio like this, uh, they have an easy life. They're not doing very much. There's not much current going through them. They don't get very warm. Their temperature doesn't change much during operation. Other resistors are working hard. There's current flowing through them. Their temperature is rising a little bit when they're operating. And then there's a few resistors that are taking some punishment. Those are usually the higher wattage resistors. And those guys who work hard, just like people, wear out early. Plate resistors carry all the tube current through them. Uh, they can take a bit of a beating, um, maybe ahead of other resistors. Typically, resistors go up in resistance as they fail. Not always, but most, most, most of the time. Up in resistance means they stop conducting the current and uh, conveying the voltage that they're supposed to beyond themselves. So, um, reading the uh, color bars on an old radio like this on the resistor is a little difficult at times. Um, so you really need a schematic to, to be sure. But, now you might be wondering, hey Jim, you're testing this radio, it's got these old piece of junk capacitors in them. Uh, surely that's the cause of the problem. You know, it probably is. And you've seen the big one that's split up, up at the top here. You might think, well, the split capacitor, there's no chance of this thing working. Well, that's not quite true. Um, so what I'm thinking through my head, when I'm thinking, <laughs> what I am thinking through my head right now is should I just start replacing capacitors here? It's just a wee bit premature. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm on my way to replacing all these, but... At, at this point, I'd like to get a better sense of what is and is not working and why. So we're left with the impression right now that B plus is low in the power supply. Could easily be because of uh, the restricted uh, power I'm supplying to the radio. If I put full power on, that B plus might come right up to where it's supposed to be. Um, and I'm seeing that a portion of that B plus it seems to be making it okay to the output tubes. Hey, let's tap the grids on the output tube. Tubes before that appear to be starved for voltage. Now yeah, let's let's tap the grid on the output tube. I'll figure out which one it is here. 6K6. 6H 6K. Six. Six six Problem with doing this, you have to know your alphabet. K, K6, 6K6, our pentode. Okay, the signal grid is number five. Pin number five. Pin number five, we'll just use the voltmeter here to tap it a bit. Pin number five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is pin number five, right here. That's a volume up full. Nothing at all, eh? Okay, the other output tube. The other output tube, pin number five. Uh, let's see, maybe they've got these oriented exactly the same way. Maybe not. Yikes. Yikes. Pin number five. Well, I think it's up here. touching any of these will make sound. Okay, so we'll make an assumption here that 68 volts is not enough voltage in the radio to, uh, to operate it. And we know the radio is consuming twice as much power as it should when it's, uh, when it's running. It's, it's, it's consuming 55 watts right now. 
80 is the rating. I saw it go up well over that. But we can put it on full voltage for a short while and uh, see what happens here in a couple of things. See if the output comes to life when I'm touching things and we'll see what the uh, voltage goes up to also. I think that's what we'll do. I'll keep my eye on the wattage on this this thing here. It's, here we go. Hum, distinct hum showed up. 136 watts of consumption. Okay, B plus is now uh, 75. It's still nowhere where still way off from where it should be. The other side's going. Still very low. Okay, that's too low. Um, the grid on the output two is one, two, three, four, five. This one here. Nothing. I'm also looking to see if a negative bias voltage shows up on the uh, meter. Nothing showing up. And on the other two, pin five could be here. Ah, I have the volume right up full here. So no, I don't. Now I got it up full. Let's go back. Pin five. One, two, three, four. Not a thing. Ooh, okay. This, this is this is not too good here. Speaker not getting hot. What is getting hot? 136 watts of heat being thrown off by this guy. There's an awful lot of heat coming up from that uh, rectifier too. Somewhere there's a lot of heat coming. Power off. Let's tip it down. Don't hold it by the IF cans. Didn't you say that to everybody before? That is where I think the heat is coming from. It's almost, it's uh, 200 degrees C. That won't be comfortable. When you touch that tube, uh, you're going to lose skin on it. That's what I think. Is there anything else here that's just... Yeah, this is just pumping out the heat here like crazy. Oh, oh, the big transformer is warming up too. 37. Hmm, not surprising, is it? The heavy current draw. Okay, so we're going to pull out the rectifier tube. Just need a cloth to protect my hand here. seem like a dumb test, but I'm going to disable the power supply that way. And we're going to run the radio without the rectifier in. We're going to see what the current draw is, just to double check that the current draw is beyond the rectifier too. Fat, fat chance it isn't. I'm never wrong about anything, so here we go. Unrestricted power. See, now the voltage being supplied to the radio has gone all the way up to 120 volts because there's basically no load except the heaters. The heaters are coming on. And now the watts, 24 watts of power. So that, that's a third of its rating. Its rating is 80. It's producing 25 watts right now. That makes sense to me. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, eight, nine. The uh, we haven't looked at this magic eye tube very much yet. Oh, it's a little warm too, so I think it must be operating to some degree. Um, you know, so that makes sense. Twenty-five watts with this many tubes in here. Oh, so I don't think the transformer is overheating because of 
some problem ahead of the rectifier because the transformer is overheating I'm concerned that uh, without due caution so let's think about it now the last rectifier tube melted down inside how much you want to bet it actually melted down you know what I forgot to test it in my tester too we should do that this one here is on its way to melting down uh, I think it's, it's too hot I think that's too hot lots of capacitors uh, you know you could have tube biases that are incorrect in here now uh, tubes conducting more current than they're really supposed to uh, lots of problems stemming from those bad capacitors so even though I can't put my finger on exactly what is happening I think we got to start uh, changing out some capacitors and it's pretty important I get the right schematic especially for this uh, you know, I'm very supply surprised the amplifier doesn't produce any sound at all in the speaker maybe that's the issue to focus on right now until the speaker makes some sound it's pretty hard to work on a radio uh, other than just taking wild guesses and just changing parts based on visual observation and the like I uh, don't like that much rather have a sense even if my sense is wrong I'd rather have a sense of purpose in changing out parts and that so what can we do about the speaker let's see the speaker does make a bit of a hum sound the speaker is tricky to test because it has no permanent magnet so it needs that field coil current coming out of the radio to even set itself up to operate and then because the uh, the uh, voice uh, because the uh, output transformer is up on the speaker itself it's just a little more tricky to get at the voice coil wires is that really true that's not true the voice coil wires are easily accessed accessed there so we, we could put a signal right into the uh, voice coil and hear that speaker work mechanically it must be working it's producing a bit of a hum electrically we don't know for sure that there's any kind of signal reaching that output transformer we don't know that we need to know that we need to know that the speaker itself is uh, sensitive to the signals reaching it from inside the radio How do I do that? Now, didn't I power this guy up with my uh, power supply? Didn't I find the leakage was like a milliamp or two? A milliamp at a couple hundred volts? It's still not very much power. I don't know. It's not all adding up to me exactly. But I'm quite concerned that the speaker's not making any sound at this point. That, I think, is the focal point. Um, make the speaker speak. Another thing I could do, um, and wow, I've never done anything like this, is uh, I could cut away capacitors. Um, again, I'd need a schematic to kind of pick which capacitor to do this with. But I could cut away capacitors that I suspect are leaky and watch the uh, power uh, level, power drain from the radio change I don't know I don't know about the logic of doing that you'd have to think if a capacitor is drawing that much wattage through it that capacitor uh, caught fire some time ago so that didn't happen but it's much more likely what's going on here is one of the tubes is overheating it's overworking and that will most likely be in the output tubes did not seem to get un unusually hot. I'm just not getting any leads here on what to try. Now I don't have these guys connected. Is there some wild chance I'm completely wrong and if you don't connect these guys you're out of luck. So they, they connect into here. Over here. 
these lines all go to these coils. It's very much a radio tuning issue on these wires. These wires are coming from the front end of the radio tube. Can't imagine hooking these up is going to have any effect on the speaker being able to make a hum or me touching the grids of the output tubes and not hearing anything. Not hearing anything. I'm touching the grid of the output tubes. I hear a hum, but I don't hear a hiss or anything like that. Now the hum could easily be the field coil itself in the power supply. Particularly, you know what, particularly if the radio is drawing a heavy current through the power supply, which it appears to be doing, that heavy current is flowing through that field coil. A little extra heavy current, a filter may be uh, unable to filter out all the hum with that much draw on it. And you hear a little hum coming out of that speaker, even though there is no signal to the voice coil. makes some sense to me. No signal reaching the voice coil. Uh, another way to really uh, injure a radio is to not only burn out the power transformer, but to burn out the output transformer. Chance of that here is pretty small, I think. Very, very small, I think. I don't know. I think I gotta stop and think and think with my full brain here. You know, I guess if I can't come up with any other uh, indicators of what to do, then I'll just go ahead and start changing capacitors here in the audio section. All of these ones and see if that doesn't bring up the audio. Um, if, I, if I can't get any more direct, direct impression, man, I gotta get that speaker to make some sound. How am I gonna do that? That's what I'm gonna stop and think about. Okay, so an idea came to mind here. Uh, maybe the radio is working, not the output amplifier. So it could be where the radio signal meets the amplifier, where the output of the radio meets the input to the amplifier. There's a radio signal there that I could potentially intercept and listen to. So where does that occur? Well, often that occurs right in the volume control, in that the output of the radio is fed to the volume control, and then a portion of that signal is, is picked off, if you like, and fed onto the amplifier. So there's a very easy place to listen to the output of the radio circuitry. And that's going to be right on this control. This is the volume control. I, I went out and checked the cabinet. So the tone control has the switch. And this is the volume one down here though. So all we got to do is listen listen to this wire right here, which incidentally is connected to the cable that goes to the push buttons. And I believe it's the phono connection. So that all makes sense. That's all making good sense. You can also see a shielded wire here. That's probably carrying a very weak audio signal from the radio. Uh, looks like it's heading out on the cable up to the switch. Then the switch is either selecting the radio to continue back in, the radio output to continue back in, or a uh, signal coming from uh, from the phono. It all makes sense. So all I got to do is listen here. And to do that, let's see, I have a, I have a uh, how can we do that? I have a couple ways of doing it. One is to utilize this big stereo I have in here. Let me set that up. Because uh, the first time I've tried this, it'll take me a, a couple of minutes to get it set up. Oh, Spunky. Come on in. Come on. So he wants me to come out. That's why he won't come in. Okay. So, despite his crying right now, um... This is the input to my big stereo. Let me switch it on. Okay, and now I should make some sound here. I'm 
sure you can hear. Let's turn down the volume. Now, there's a chance there's going to be some DC here. So I'm going to want to block that out with a moderate size capacitor. Even a bigger, bigger size capacitor. I don't want to feed DC into my stereo. Okay, so we'll clip this here. Give you a closer look. What's going on here? There we are. Okay, so volume control, and there's three terminals down below there. You can't quite see them because there they are down there. One is going to the this is the uh, cable plug if you like that it goes up to the push buttons the one in the middle the connection in the middle goes through this tired old capacitor and works its way to what must be the grid of this tube this being the detector first amplifier tube this is the 6SF5 tube here and then the signal is going to work its way back into the Oh, wait a minute, that quite add up. Oh, I take all that back. Okay, don't know what's going on here, but we'll carry on anyway. Um, so I'm going to connect to this wire here through the capacitor. Okay, now. So that gives full output into my uh, stereo, to my stereo receiver. What do we hear at this point? A very faint hum when I turn it way up. This is the auxiliary input uh, to the stereo. Okay, of course, what do we expect to come out of the radio when I haven't got these wires connected? And that's coupled with an even bigger challenge. Yes, if I try to connect the wires here, I don't know which one goes where just yet. <laughs> oh, Spunky, come on. Oh, Peanut. Oh, I'm getting ganged up on now. We have a gang of cats here. Cat gang each going on. That's Spunky. And out there in the sunshine is Peanut. Come on in, guys. No, because you never feed us in there. <laughs> Do it. Spunky is 17 and a half years old. He's pretty old for a cat. I mean, it's like a kid in comparison. Okay, enough cat stuff. We'll turn this on, we'll see what happens. I'm really not too impressed with my whole setup here, but. Drag both of us this far, I might as well go all the way. Okay, we're ready. Ready we are. We'll be on restricted power. There we go. Radio's on. I'll turn up my stereo a little bit. shop here right now. What do I expect? I don't expect much here. I really don't expect much because I think the rectifier tube's in my hand here. Yeah, a bit of a low expectation there. Let me put this tube back in. Turn the power off in case you didn't see that. Rectifier tube goes in the socket so easily, it's as if the socket is, uh, as if the socket doesn't have any grippiness. Okay, now once again, this time with the uh, rectifier in, let me turn down my stereo. Just in case something terrible happens. Here we go. 
turn up my stereo. Drawing 50 watts again. My young cat wants to play with the old cat, but the old cat is way past playing. He's cold shouldering my younger cat. My younger cat's crying about it. Come on, he's come on, play a little with me. So far this radio is not playing with me. Okay, let me turn it up my stereo further. Okay, that if 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 I flip my stereo to its own radio, it would be blasting in this shop right now. Nothing is being heard. Now did I do this really right? I touch that. We should hear it. Let me turn down the volume first. So you can see, there is nothing, nothing, there is nothing. Okay, so for a short while I'm going to put this guy on full power once again. We'll see what comes out. Let me turn down the volume. Here we go. Turn up the volume. And settings on push button. Let, let me take it off that. Turn down the line. Off push button. I think I heard a little pop when I did that. I don't know where I heard it from. Okay, so now we're on the stereo, we're listening to the output of the radio portion of this radio. And we're not hearing much of anything, are we? hear that, but there's a little something there. A little something. Now why can't we hear that little something out of the speaker over here? So, turn down my stereo. Can't hear that anymore. Turn up the radio. Not a thing. Okay, let's turn this guy off because he's cooking. Wow, this is one tough radio so far. Wow, it's not giving me too many hints to anything. Might make some sense for me to actually get these wires plugged in properly into the push button. The, the challenge there is the push button physically sits about here, looking out this way. These wires are long enough that the push buttons can be here. But anywhere else, these wires are not long enough, so I have some trouble setting the push button down. I practically have to hold it where it's intended to go. And the other one is, without the schematic, I'm going to have a tough time figuring out which wire goes where. Uh, in fact, it'd be pretty much guesswork. Although, although I do not, I have not found a schematic for this particular number of this chassis, I do have access to a schematic for a very similar chassis and I'm pretty sure the radio portion is identical it's just the output output portion on here that's different so I think I, I'm probably in a position to figure this out and then you know I just don't know what else to do but start changing out capacitors in here I don't like it that's where we're at though